The Olsen Instruments Foundation Test Gauge is a sonic echo system used for pile integrity testing. The FTG can quickly and accurately test drilled shafts, concrete-driven piles, and timber piles to determine foundation depth, diameter changes, bulbs or necks, and integrity. With the FTG, it is possible to identify cracks, voids, soil or water intrusions, and uncured or weak concrete. This economically priced system is particularly ideal for testing cell tower foundations and can also be used to measure shorter light pole foundations. The FTG is a compact, USB-powered device designed for easy, fast, reliable operation and requires no special training as it runs on any Windows 7 or greater device that is supplied by the customer. The FTG is proudly made in the USA at our facility in Denver, Colorado, where our equipment has been built for over 30 years. When you open the box that holds your FTG system, you will find an FTG interface unit, one accelerometer receiver, one accelerometer cable, one three-pound non-instrumented hammer with black and red tips, a can of adhesive grease, a BNC adapter, one audio auxiliary cable, one USB to micro USB adapter, and a USB drive containing FTG software, the system manual, and the Sonic Echo interpretation manual. To set up the FTG system, install the FTG software from the provided USB drive. Connect the USB drive to your Windows device. Click on the FTG setup directory, open setup.exe. You may need admin rights to install the software. If so, see your IT department. The software will be installed using a setup wizard. Select next as appropriate. Select yes when prompted to confirm changes. Choose Close to exit. This will create a shortcut on your desktop. Connect the audio plug on the FTG interface unit to your powered up Windows device. After making the connection, a pop-up window may immediately appear on the screen. Select the microphone option. Note, if a pop-up window does not appear on the screen, then use the audio auxiliary cable to connect the audio plug on your FTG to your Windows device. Attach the USB connector of the FTG to the Windows device. If you are using a Windows device with only a micro USB port, use the provided USB to micro USB adapter to complete the connection. Attach the BNC adapter to the BNC cable of the FTG. Now attach the accelerometer cable to the other end of the BNC adapter. Connect the accelerometer cable to the accelerometer by aligning the pin on the cable with the corresponding hole in the accelerometer and then hand tighten the connection. When the FTG is properly connected to the Windows device and the accelerometer is attached to the accelerometer cable, a small green light on the FTG will illuminate. If the light does not illuminate, check the connections, particularly the connection of the accelerometer. Brush off the top of the shaft to remove dust and grit. If extremely rough, you may need to grind it smooth. Put a small amount of coupling grease on the base of the accelerometer. Mount the accelerometer securely on a smooth, clean area on the foundation top. You want as little grease as possible between the foundation and the accelerometer. The system is now ready to acquire data. Double click on the FTG shortcut to open the software. The software is comprised of two different panels, the filter panel and the waveform data panel. The filter panel is collapsible, allowing the waveform data panel to be enlarged during data acquisition. For a complete description of the filter panel's interactive features, please refer to your system reference manual. Within the waveform data panel, the plot box shows the current time domain data. Per the status field in the main menu, the program is currently in standby mode. Unless changed, a default velocity of 12,000 feet per second will be used during data collection. This is an average velocity value for typical sound concrete. The units can be changed from metric to English or vice versa either during or after data collection. At this point, the user has two options for collecting and saving data. The setup file name option, which is fully described in the system reference manual, can be used to set up automatic file naming when performing numerous tests. 
The start option can be used to start testing without setting up automatic file naming. When using this mode, the user will be prompted to name each file individually. For the purposes of this instructional video, we will use the start option. To use the FTG, with the accelerometer mounted to the top of the foundation, prepare to use the hammer. The three pound hammer is typically supplied with two heads, black and red. The red head is softer than the black head. For most pile integrity tests, the black head is recommended. The red head is typically used for long foundations that are 90 feet or greater. If testing a foundation under 10 feet, we recommend using a small 16 ounce ball peen hammer. Select the start option. A Save As dialog box will open. Enter the individual file name desired. Select Save to close the dialog box and proceed with testing. The system is now waiting to receive data in the form of an impact as reported in the status field, which is currently in waiting for data mode. When in waiting for data mode, the waveform panel will be green. Using the hammer, hit the foundation top next to the accelerometer, being careful not to hit the accelerometer or the accelerometer cable. You will want to hit only hard enough to generate a quality output. The impact generates wave energy. If the shaft is sound, the wave travels to the bottom of the foundation and back to the top. If the shaft is compromised, the wave reflects off irregularities and travels back to the top. At the surface, the accelerometer receiver measures the vibration response. Note that the voltage level of the waveform data from the accelerometer has to exceed the trigger level in order for the system to start taking data. The results are displayed on the screen of the Windows device, with the percentage full scale of the maximum amplitude shown above the waveform panel. The percentage full scale should range between 10 and 90 percent, and the waveform panel will be blue when these conditions exist. The program is now waiting for you to accept or reject the data, as reported in the status field, which is currently in accept or reject mode. If the percentage full scale is too low, less than 10%, the waveform panel will be yellow. When this is the case, you should reject the data and retest applying a harder impact. In addition, it might be necessary to increase the volume, which can be adjusted with the volume option arrows. If the percentage full scale is too high, greater than 90%, the waveform panel will be red. When this is the case, you should reject the data and retest applying a lighter impact. In addition, it might be necessary to decrease the volume. If the data is acceptable, select the green check mark in the toolbar. If the data is not acceptable, select the red X and repeat the test. After the first record has been accepted, the program will wait for you to repeat the test two more times for a total of three records at the same location. It is important to recognize that the sonic echo method is generally limited to shafts with a length to diameter ratio of 20 or 30 to 1. This means that short, wide shafts can be more easily measured than long, slender shafts. Averaging and Record Inclusion After you have saved a data file, you can open that file and the status field will report that you are in analysis mode. The software automatically displays the three records that were collected during testing. The square black X button can be used to toggle between average and average plus individual record. When average is active, all of the selected waveforms are averaged into one waveform. When average plus individual record is active, the software displays all of the waveforms that have been selected, as well as the average. Individual waveforms can be removed from the analysis by clicking on the box indicating the number and color of the waveform you want to remove. At least one record must be selected. This is useful when a bad record is accidentally collected or if the record appears to be outside the norm for the rest of the data. Once removed, this waveform is not included in the average. Amplification The data can be amplified exponentially with time using the AMP plus or minus option to increase and decrease the amplification factor. This feature can make the bottom echo clearer. Identify shaft depth the sonic echo data is analyzed by picking the troughs in the waveform. When working with straightforward test results, the first trough representing the initial impact should be selected, along with the subsequent trough deemed to represent the shaft bottom, or other significant reflection. Based on these picks, the shaft depth will be automatically calculated and displayed at the top of the waveform panel. 
If multiple picks, three or more, are made at locations where multiple echoes appear in the waveform, the depth value will be averaged. A cursor function is available to allow the user to manually pick the troughs. Simply click on or touch the screen at the desired location to activate the cursor function, which appears as a red X. If the cursor needs to be adjusted, use the red arrows on the toolbar to move the cursor right or left. The arrows will only move the most recently placed cursor. If an error is made, you can double-click anywhere on the plot to clear previous selections. Please refer to the Sonic Echo Data Interpretation Manual to learn more about the analysis of more complex data involving necks, bulbs, cracks, and breaks. The FTG system can be used to quickly and easily test the pile integrity of concrete and timber shafts. If you have additional questions, please call us at 303-423-1212 and ask for technical support. We can also be reached by email at info at olsoninstruments.com.